And we're back to the Thousand Year Campaign with our far-reaching but really not well-organized empire as we approach a, uh, an inevitable era of turmoil and upheaval that might well, uh, you know, throw us a curveball or two. But I'm sure we'll be ready to face whatever the future holds, right? <laughs> uh, not a chance. Okay, so let's see what we've got. I have trumped everyone and I'm the best emperor ever. Well, he certainly is ambitious. Or is no longer ambitious. Oh, crap. So you're now worse at everything. Yeah, great. A famous bard arrived to court. Okay, you're welcome to come. No, no, no. You stay in your place, we'll stay in our place. Our land is our land, and your land is also our land. A succession... Huh. Okay, the Pope loves us. That's good. We like the Pope loving us. Venessa for Emperor Idris the Cruel. Okay, well, if we could get Najera or Navara, but something tells me that is not going to be the case. Defensive Pact. And more heretics. Damn it. Let's see. Any laws we can change? That would decrease our vassal limit, but increase our... Hmm. Would the council vote for us? No, no they would not. Crap. Okay, can't even change that. Never mind. Never mind. She might fancy us, you say. Wow. Well, we also fancy her. Groomed and shrewd. We are rich as all... Oh, pirates? Okay, that's not good. I must send a letter to the French king and find out if they are hating pirates. Hmm, pillaging and plundering our lands, indeed. He does not like our tone. You're just a kid. This tadpole is hiding something. Oh well, oh well. What could we do? You are the worst kind of scum to frame and then attack in such a vile way, those who have been so loyal. What? We've been at war almost for two centuries. Good riddance. Ah, she is pregnant. Good. And here we are. Unexpectedly so, maybe, or maybe not. Let's generously review our illustrious forefathers. 
the initial ruler of the very, very tiny Duchy of Portugale. He ruled for 28 years, was competent, but not extraordinary. That was left to his son, the first king of Portugal. But most importantly, and most impressively, Emperor Afonso the Hammer managed to capture a number of crowns for the glory of Portugal and become Emperor of Portugal, King of Lusitania, Portugal, Castile, Galicia, Leon, and the Kingdom of Crusader Syria. That was indeed the start, the start to an illustrious and long line of glorious emperors and empresses. Well, mostly. A few exceptions, like this idiot. Ah, the most in impressive of which, Emperor Afonso the Apostle. Apostle, uh, despite being a uh, worshipper of Lucifer, Baphomet, and all things evil. Emperor Bermudo the Great, uh, because undoubtedly uh, he lost his kindness, last shreds of human decency in his Bermudo Triangle. The copycat, Emperor Garcia the Hammer, though uh, he was more uh, likely to hammer nails in with his forehead than uh, actual uh, combat. And then the fatty, fatty idiot, uh, and the short-lived but still uh, fairly impressive Emperor Irish. And uh, as could be, uh, could be no other way in fact, our glorious, glorious uh, dynasty overshadows any, any other in the history of the world until now. So, the Renaissance sweeps across Europe and the feudal era draws to a close. With a score of etc., you beat House Capet, descended from Robert the Strong, who was a power figure during the reign of Charles the Bald. His descendants would be kings of France in 1066, but of course what do we care about those damn Frenchies? Although by 1322 the main line would die out, Cadet branches out still had a branches still ruled in 1337 as kings of France, <laughs> no they don't, Naples, Hungary, and Navarre. Cadet branches would also hold the duchies of Brittany, Burgundy, Bourbon, Provence, and Achaia. One further Cadet branch would hold the dignity of emperor as Latin emperors of Constantinople. Well, no, we do, we do that. Truly the greatest dynasty of medieval Europe. Well, that would be ours, not the Cadet. So, as the first leg of our oh-so-so-long historic journey, we could say that we are not necessarily an unmitigated success, but we certainly exceeded expectations and beat the historical outcome by quite some margin. That was expected, though, and uh, we'll just have to find out how we fare during this time of very, very violent upheaval and disunion and essentially cultural religious revolution sweeping across the continent. So, let's see. The Chronicle of House Vimaranesh, or Gimaranesh, in which has contained the record of its yearly fortunes, glories, and difficulties. Ah, so the first son, a dragon was seen, somehow. Giant destroyed villages, etc., etc. We lost a very important battle against the Aptasid Emirate. The early years were difficult, difficult to survive. However, we managed to uh, go into war against uh, different counties, duchies, and kingdoms. We 
We managed to at some point, let's see. No, that's not it. Ah, the inheritance. So his son managed to... Come on. I know it was sometime around here, somewhere. Apparently not. When did we become a kingdom? Not until much later, apparently. Ah, here it is. Duke Sancho of Portocalli went to war against King Alfonso of Galicia. And we won. We won. Yes. Now, he became king. King of Portugal the Great. We had many glorious years, crusades, many battles. We won wars against our rival dukes and kingdoms. Against Queen Sancho of Castile, that was a particularly difficult one, if you well remember. And we usurped her crown, after all. That was a very important step into building our multicultural empire. And by multicultural, I mean squashing every single other culture other than Portuguese. That's what multicultural means. We then went to war against uh, the Muslim Saracen infidels to the south. Fought on several crusades. And managed to found the Eternal Empire in 1170. Which just happens to be very close to the actual historic date on which the Kingdom of Portugal was established. However, greater deeds awaited. And, oh yes, we killed thousands of wild rabbits to the glory of all mankind. We fought emirates. We fought Hungarians. We fought other emirates. And other jihads and uh, crusades. Fought against France. For the, I think the first of many other times. We had all sorts of very, very noteworthy events. Until, finally, at some point here, let's see, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? A very, very important event. Aha! We managed to win the war in the south and finally completing our rightful territory. Our homeland, as it were. But that was not all. Then we moved forward, move onward, onward to greater things. We acquired territories in the east, in Aleppo. We fought the Holy Roman Empire. We had revolts, non-stop, traitors, usurpers. Another revolt, as per usual, as per usual, war against France, that we won, of course, 
conquered the Canaries. We fought Marrakesh. We conquered Thrake in the Latin Kingdom. We fought all sorts of revolts again. Traitorous usurpers, council uh, power uprisings, etc, etc, etc. Nevertheless, we persevered. Revolt after revolt after revolt after revolt after revolt. You get the picture. This all led to a very, very important set of events that managed to create the greatest empire the continent has seen for centuries. However, as we close in on the mid 15th century, increased unrest looms over the horizon. Kingdoms might crumble, empires might splinter, dynasties might falter. And that's what we will have to face in this time of upheaval. Hopefully, in the next leg of our journey, in Europa Universalis IV, an age of discovery, technological innovation, colonization, and global trade, as opposed to this parochial dynastic infighting and intrigue, we have to look towards more glorious ends. And an omen. A star fell from the sky in Meliten, killing three cows. What could that mean? Hmm. Maybe the cows were evil. They deserved it, clearly bad cows. Maybe these were the three wise men and the star falling from the sky was God saying the three wise men next time don't bring us crappy myrrh. All right that could be it or maybe something else. Maybe something else. Maybe it means nothing but who knows. We'll just have to see. And this is the final chapter of the Chronicle of the Three Cows of the House of Bermudanes. Let's take a look at the score screen. Export. And now that we have this chronicle in our rearview mirror, we shall take a quick timeline check on exactly what went on over the course of the last 400 years, almost 400 years. So keep your eyes open for the next entry to the series where you can see just that. And afterwards, we will move on to the next era, the Renaissance in Europa Universalis IV. But that is all going to be in the next few times. Till then.